Hello and welcome to the Battling Barrow and game three of our D&D campaign overview set in the wonderful world of Mistara. Um, in this uh, session I actually recorded it. It started off to be like an audio recording just so I could try and remember what happened. But we decided to do a full uh, video recording because uh, I wanted to know if I was going to ever record a D&D game. How would I do it? So it's a bit of an experiment into that. Um, that raw recording I'm going to make available over on my uh, Patreon, so patrons can go and watch that uh, like three hours or so long, maybe a bit longer. Um, <clears throat> that's that will be the unabridged game. There will be some editing to cut out the sort of dead space where I'm setting things up or we're taking breaks, but for the most part, that you can what the what I'm going to relay here you can go and watch over on Patreon. Now, with that out of the way, let me try and misremember and even with the footage I'm going to misremember things um, about what happened and we'll lay you into the wonderful world of my campaign. So last time uh, we had cleared out the upper floor of Castle Caldwell and they discovered a mysterious locked door that seemed to be uh, wizard locked so they uh, Caldwell had a key that he thought through the front door Gave it to the players to experiment with and see if it was the key to that. And so you have a look what what's in there and clear out anything they find. So they go back to the castle, and sure enough, the key unlocks the door. Inside there is a dark room. Now, one thing I forgot to mention in the last video was in Castle Caldwell, almost every description for the room has there is a seven-foot ledge with two windows on the and then you insert whatever wall the windows are on the east wall which gives light into it and i forgot to mention this because it was a standing gag by the end of that uh, last session where it's like you're in a room there's a seven foot ledge where two windows provide light yeah and as soon as i started the description both players would jump in with that whereas this time when i opened the door there is no seven foot ledge letting light in it's a completely dark room so they got a lantern which they light up and have a look inside and they see a trapdoor. Um, I was just expecting them to jump straight through the trap trapdoor and have at you, but they didn't. They were quite cautious. In fact, they were talking about uh, casting Detect Magic upon it, which would scupper my plans a bit. But luckily they didn't and they ended up jumping in because it's about, they worked out for a torch and see how deep it was, worked out it was about 10 foot, so they lowered themselves in. And as soon as they did, it slams shut behind them and disappears. Uh, this phases them for a bit, but instantly a lady walks around the corner and looks as surprised as they are to see them. She uh, introduces herself as Lulia, and she looks suspiciously like Witchy Poo, uh, but not quite. She's on. She could almost be some sort of cousin in sort of looks. Um, she mentions there is a treasure somewhere around here and that the exit's on the other side of the long corridor. Um, they agreed to, uh, for her to tag along and they leave and walk out the corridor. Um, they come to a door on the left hand side, which Lulia suggests that uh, Witchy Poo and her go in alone to check out while the ranger goes to the corridor to find the exit, uh, which they do. But they knock, they sort of listen on the door first and inside they can hear sort of older men talking and the sound of bubbling and so forth like it's a uh, laboratory. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Meanwhile, the ranger comes to a, uh, walks around the corridor, has a look around and then comes back and because he's, there's lots of doors along the corridor and he sees uh, the double doors quite near them. Um, meanwhile, Lulia and Witchipoo have opened the door and discovered two wizards in there uh, practicing. They quickly determined that they have lost their mind. I don't know how long they've been down here. And as they approach them, the wizards draw daggers uh, and begin to attack. But there is a noxious smell of marsh gas in the room. So as Witchipoo is about to uh, cast Burning Hands, He's quickly decided don't do that because it could be explosive and uh, cause, well, mass destruction. 
But that gives the ranger an idea who's rushing now rushing towards him, who lights a torch and asks him to, is shouting for them to get out of the room. He throws the torch and on his dex roll gets a natural 20. So not only does that torch, lighty torch, go where it needs to go, also bashes one of the wizards up the head we decided and I also decided I want to introduce a critical and a fumble table system in because 5e I just don't enjoy the rules for crits and fumbles anymore uh, so I'm going to work on that between now and the next game but yes sure enough the gas is explosive and with the door slammed behind witchy poo who slams it she jumps out uh, the room goes boom and there are some crispy fried uh, wizards now uh, <clears throat> after the flames have died down, Witchy Poo and Lulia go back in to investigate while the ranger returns to the double doors. Um, he opens it and sees a corridor uh, that is has honeycombed holes in the wall. It's not a very wide room he comes into, but due to where they both are, uh, the room that Witchy Poo and Lulia are in, and the corridor now that the ranger are in, is actually one of the same, it sort of loops around. But from where they're both standing, they can't actually see that it's joined. Now, while they're on their own, uh, they ask for a marching order, and Witchy Poo makes Lulia go first. Once the marching order has been uh, established, and Lulia realizes she is on her own. She turns around uh, with a knife drawn and tries to assassinate the uh, wizard who screams out. The ranger hears this and realizes he is in the same corridor as them. But as he does so, four robber flies fly out from the holes and start attacking him and they almost do him in. Luckily, it all works out in the end. Uh, he kills them, but by the time he runs down the corridor, the uh, Lulia, who is a doppelganger, has taken on the same form as uh, Witchy Poo, who has, in the bit earlier just now, cast burning hands on her, so she's looking a bit singed. To begin with, the ranger is confused about which one's which until he clocks on that if, well, one's singed and one isn't, I, uh, my wizard is a uh, bit of a pyrotechnic, so. Uh, he guesses rightly that that's the uh, doppelganger and between them they dispatch it and get back to the quest. Uh, they walk around to the corridor and come to a large room which is empty. They come to a, another room which is locked and then they open another door uh, and enter that. Uh, this this is getting a bit more cavernous where they are now, uh, a bit more beforehand they're in where they are is cavernous anyway but this is even more so and the room they are in at this stage is currently empty too there is a door on the other side and in there there is a corridor uh, with three doors two on the north wall one on the south wall uh, they open the first door they come to and appear in and this room also appears to be empty but then they notice something quite strange and that is sort of coins and stuff seemingly hovering in the air and as their eyes adjust it's not empty at all it is a gelatinous cube uh, with initiative rolled uh, and the cube going last they wisely decide just to close the door and leave it at that rather than antagonizing it um, the next room they come to, so I'm just having a look through the book to uh, remind me as well, uh, on the north door is also empty. Uh, so they try the door on the uh, south, uh, south entrance and it opens up into a vast cavern-like system. Uh, as they shine the lantern round, the floor is very shiny and it is covered in silver coins. Uh, it's gonna take about 10 minutes to pick them up the ranger proceeds to do this while Witchy Poo scouts ahead and she notices there are three passages running off. She tries the first and stealthily goes around the corner uh, because there are some mean looking gentlemen around the campfire there uh, who are berserkers. Um, she gets the ranger back and then they enter combat as these berserkers do not want to listen to reason. Um, the ranger throws one of his flasks of oil from his lantern over, which Witchy Poo casts burning hands upon and basically 
has napalm and takes them all out except for the leader who actually takes a lot of damage and begins to worry him as he rushes towards him arrows have gone into him daggers have gone into him and he's still coming but at the last they dispatch their foe and carry on picking up some treasure room the next room they go in they're just systematically going through the passages and so forth next room they go down to uh, has a cavern in this cavern there is a chest now remembering the chest from the upper floor they very wisely do check for traps uh, they notice something they sort of examine it and they do notice there is something sketchy about this chest so with an investigation check which they pass as well they notice there are what seems to be three springs and maybe with three uh, darts in there so Wichipu is not doing too good so the ranger asks her to step well aside and leave the room and he stands to the side from the other side of the uh, chest open it which I think is a great idea uh, but then I sort of say well just because you can see these so a bit of doubt into the mind just can you see these free springs pointing this way it doesn't mean there aren't any more perhaps your role wasn't high enough to ascertain how many springs there are which puts a bit of doubt in his mind but he goes for it and opens it and luckily for him the, the darts fly off uh, safely uh, the chest inside is uh, just contains uh, a, few, a bit of treasure but they realize they can use it again for filling up any other coins and so forth they find the final cavern they uh, Search is contains some monsters I love uh, that are Mistara and Beckme uh, classics, and these are the foal. Uh, these are uh, part troll, pop goblin, and ghoul. They're not undead like ghouls, but they share some of their characteristics. They look like hobgoblins. Uh, they sort of paralyze you like ghouls, and they can regenerate like trolls as long as they haven't taken any acid or fire damage the previous round. For this 5e edition, I am using the rules found in the uh, Keep on the Borderlands Reincarnated book from Goodman Games. So they have a combat with those and I was really looking forward to this until I remembered that Witchy Poo is a pyromaniac and is just going to unleash fire upon him to stop the regeneration uh, aspect happening and sure enough that is how it goes down um, but one troll uh, foal manages to escape that and after doing some damage the next turn I took great pleasure in describing how it seems to its wounds seem to mesh together and it heals looks like it's healing itself which you can see a bit of panic creep into the party there so uh after a hard fought battle there they uh, win the day have a search around and they find some treasure and a key a very ornate key which they ascertain is the locked door from earlier as that keyhole was very ornate in itself so it looks like it match fits that we return to that room and open the door expecting to see the exit because they've searched everywhere else and there aren't any other rooms or exits and there's just a cabinet in there um, full of treasure seemingly the ranger um, has a problem but you may have guessed this from my stories where if he sees treasure he's got to grab it and pick it up it's a part of his character uh, he's decided and so he instantly runs to pick it up and poofs disappears with this the uh, witchy poo searches the room without getting too near where he disappeared just to see what's happening the co corner of the room opposite though it seems to have an invisible barrier that she can't reach at the same time uh, after she's done that the ranger is in a separate room on top of a stone circle that momentarily fades from being lit up green and he's in a dark room where there are 10 sarcophagi um, after a while witchy poo decides to try the wardrobe the cupboard that the ranger disappeared from and she ends up in the same room as him they then start searching the sarcophagi and pull one uh the first one to come to uh, open now this is a switcher the 
room they were in had a uh, cupboard which is an illusion and that is a teleport spot that goes from that room to the one they're in by pushing this sarcophagus open uh, it changes the switch it's a switch and it changes the order so if they stand on the stone circle now they'll end up back in that room but they'll end up behind that invisible barrier where the real, real wardrobe cupboard is uh, they don't step on the stone circle though they carry on searching and find next one they find some gold with that they put the gold onto the stone circle as an experiment and it disappears with that they ascertain that it's a teleporter and they carry on searching the stone sarcophagi finding more treasure but also during the course of searching they they discovered that they, the sarcophagi contained two whites which there is a ferocious battle in uh, which gets quite scary and quite heated and they're just about to give up searching because they don't want to encounter any more uh, whites uh, because they're depleting their health and resources uh, but in the last one there is the secret to the way out of here so if I can uh, hold this up which they do eventually push open or find they find this which I give to the players which says to exit this awful place to the eastern corridor you must pace and chance the magic words Owa Togu Siam so they return back to the corridor uh, that it mentions but via the teleporter and start saying the words now if you look here and they seem like quite random garbage words but if you say them quick enough it forms a it's a childish sentence but it's quite funny oh what a goose i am oh what a goose i am as soon as they say that a secret door is revealed and they exit the uh the dungeon that they are in and return to town where they go back to clifton caldwell uh let them know what's what and maybe get him to uh, dispatch the gelatinous cube they've left behind, collect their reward. They're now looking for more, another adventure, and last time uh, they were in town, they noticed on the notice board there was a notice, a wanted poster for Bargle and the Infamous. So they go and speak to the Baron, get some information who wants Bargle for the murder of his niece, Alina. Uh, so they take up that job, so that's what we'll be running next session. Um, this won't be until after Christmas now, due to Christmas coming up and then New Year. Uh, so it'll be in January, so I'll do it then. Um, hopefully, I'm using the recording of the video to hopefully get better at this so I can remember things better. Uh, I don't think I succeeded this time too well, but hopefully in the future it'll be better for that. And if you are interested in seeing the full gameplay, the full raw footage as it were, it's available over at Patreon. And I'm going to do that for each game, I think, from now on. But that's it for this video. Until the next one, stay safe and take care.